Francis here from MTBR, and today we're going to do something new, two new products from Niner Bikes. The guys that said pedal damn it are now saying ride damn it, and you can do it with e-bikes. Niners, they really popularized the category a long, long time ago. Chris Sugai came to our booth at Sea Otter a long, long time ago, showed me the bike. Rigid fork, no fork, no suspension, no gears, and I rode it and had one of the best rides of my life. So I've been hooked ever since, and I've also been riding a lot of e-bikes, and I'm glad he's joined the fray. And it is not an easy transition, for a rigid single speed 29er company to jump into e-bikes, but it is a really, I think, a necessary transition. You know, if you wanna support your dealers, if you wanna sell internationally, this has become a key category that uh, buyers are gonna to buy today and in the future. So they've introduced two bikes, the, the E-RIP9 and the WFO9. 150, 160 travel 29er on the RIP and the WFO 180, 180 <laughs> on the WFO. So guess what I got? The WFO by request. Uh, because you know, with e-bikes, it gives you the opportunity to just explore the upper limits of travel. Take it on a road trip, take it on that rugged road and, and um, and really not be compromised by travel, by tire, by whatnot. And speaking of compromise, a lot of pedaling systems uh, that existed before are compromises. You know, even the Niner's own C CVA, you know, it has a pedal platform to keep you efficient. But on e-bikes, that's less of an issue. And so with these bikes, they went full four bar horse link suspension, super active which I was really glad to hear because I did not really like CVA because I liked my suspension really, really active and moving. Uh, and, and this, I think, is a hard transition for them, but I think it's the right move. You know, you gotta go on an e-bike and not be concerned about two to 3% efficiency when you have a motor assisting you and you're, when you're gonna do some big time descents. Okay, so let me talk to you about the basics of the bike, the, what it is, is a mullet, 27.5, 2.8 tire, and 29er. And I think it's a great move. 180 rear travel, coil, and 180 front travel, air. And that's why was, what's intrigued me the most. So it's no, it's, it's, it's no, it's no lightweight, it's, it's no trail bike, it is a full on all mountain enduro downhill bike. And I've been riding it for two, three weeks, and I've had a really good experience with it. The motor they chose is the Bosch. Bosch, at first I was like, oh, Bosch, you know, I haven't ridden those in a while. And the reason I haven't ridden Bosch in a while is because, you know, they were the first adopters, but they had, you know, they had, they had to make revisions. Big, the biggest one was they had this tiny chain ring, 13 tooth or whatever. Uh, and that's not gonna do it. They needed lifters and whatnot. But they're now on generation four of the motor, lighter, stronger, better software. And last week, they introduced a new update, uh, a new update that gives it more power, more responsiveness, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's the right move, very reliable. They have this new internal battery that's 65, 625 watt hours. This, the software, not the software, the, the, the firmware has bumped up the power from 75 newton meters to 85 newton meters. That's one of the most powerful around. Levo is at 90, and, but this one feels a little more, more punchy than that one. So, and what really is the claim to fame of Bosch, aside from reliability and support network, is the torque sensor. Torque sensor is everything. So you need to know your speed, the torque that the rider is putting on the motor and respond, um, respond uh, correctly. And you're, only, you're, you're a slave 
of your torque sensor, how good a quality it is on how fast you can respond. So, you know, when you're trying to get over that log, those that rock garden or, or up that hill, you know, half second is, is an eternity. You know, what about a millisecond, so to speak? So they say their torque sensor is 20 times faster than the competition. Not sure that's true, but in riding it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the other thing that's cool with them is they have the mode called EMTB mode. And EMTB mode is, um, is something I firmly believe in. You know, we are we're always switching eco, trail, boost, whatnot. Uh, when really you want one mode, you shouldn't be switching modes all the time. The motor should know what you're trying to do and switch accordingly. And so you still have your normal modes, but you have your EMTB mode where you put it on that mode and you never touch it again. So, and what it allows as well is less shifting for you. You know, don't you hate it when you're like stuck on, on a switchback and you got to shift, but you can't really shift because you're going to apply monster 600 watts on the, on the chain and, and blow it up. So uh, the less you shift at the critical moments, the better. And the EMTB mode allows you to do that. EMTB mode allows you to save battery as well because you're not, you're not uh, in, in boost mode all the time. You know, I have a question. I, my question is always, you know, what's the, what's the, what's the best way to make eco mode suck? You know what it is? Stay on boost mode <laughs> and go back to eco mode. It's going to feel awful. Uh, but if you're on eco mode or yeah, if, if you never get on boost mode, that boost that you get from e-bike, it feels like magic. But if you come from a higher mode and you drop down, it feels like molasses, right? So EMTB mode saves battery because you're just in one mode and you never touch the boost mode, which is an over-boosted mode anyway. So how does the bike ride? How is it, how is it dialed? The, the 27.5 rear wheel, the mullet, is perfect because this is a big bike. Big bike means it's, it's, it's cumbersome, unwieldy. So anything you can do to keep this thing lighter or more agile goes a long way. So the, and they were able to keep the travel as well, 180 millimeters. So the chain stay is good, 445 uh, is your chain stay. You don't, I've been riding it, I never once got the butt buzz, meaning you're hanging back on super steep stuff. You, you, you know you're, it's a problem when you hit and then you, you try to get off it. It didn't, it didn't do it. So it definitely helps, especially on high travel bikes. The, the seat angle and Head angle is about right, 76 and 63.5 on the low setting. And it has a flip chip, so you have low and high setting. Of course, on the e-bike, you can go low setting uh, all the time, right? Provided you have a, a, seat enough, uh, a steep enough seat angle. So that's all good. The, the reach is 445, um, which is uh, on the low setting. So it's not super long, but it's plenty long for a medium, so that, that's for me. So what's really cool, uh, the other thing is the price, 6,300 for this or 62.95 and the other one, the rip is a little cheaper at, you know, 59.95. So, and it's not cheap, but it's not something you need to upgrade either. You know, one thing I, I love, hate about the Levo is it has lower price points, but you kind of have to, to throw all the, upgrade all the, comp the suspension components right away. Uh, even on the high price points, they don't seem to have, except for the Kinevo. So uh, it's nice that you, they, you get a bike, six grand, and you can start riding it and keep it for a year like that, a year or two before you feel you need to upgrade anything. So how does it ride? It is capable. I've ridden a lot of e-bikes, uh, including the Kinevo with a triple clamp fork. And this one, this one is capable. Um, on switchbacks, slow climbs, you know, it's not the right one if, if, if that's what you have endless stuff off. But when bombing down, this is it. <laughs> and you just, you know, take, give it a couple rides and get some speed and learn how to whip this thing around. You know, because, you know, once you get the rhythm of it, this thing can dance and you can dance on rocks. So that's kind of what I like about it. So let's see, what else should we talk about? 
What did I not like? Uh, I would say the the battery is uh, has a little bit of rattle to it. I'm not sure. I've got a prototype. I'm not sure if they've if put a, a gasket on 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 the battery between the battery and the frame. But I just put a couple uh, foam pads here uh, and to the and the and the the kind of the protective cover and that that silenced you know 90% of the battery noise. The 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 cover is not super dialed. You know, it looks kind of good, rugged, but you're like, it's it's not flush or whatnot. So you could ride it without. Uh, I I can take this out and and show you in photos. But it's a simple simple cover that's very protective, but it's not like super clean. I'm not crazy about this bump either, but you know that's probably made necessary by this bump uh, by the by the big huge battery, but. Um, I would say, and it's heavy, you know, it's, it's over 50 pounds, uh, and I didn't, I didn't know, get it on the scale exactly, but I would say, oh, the saddle, I'm not crazy about, but, you know, saddle is usually personal preference anyway. You're, I'm not able to get the highest, highest uh, dropper, which for me is like 180, uh, because it's, a, it's an interrupted seat tube, you know, but this is, this is low enough for me, so... The so it's been a few, uh, a few good rides, you know, maybe five rides, uh, easy rides as well as very hard rides, and I've seen the magic, you know, for 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 six grand on this one, and it, it's really cool that they give you an option uh, to get to get the WFO going, and it's one of the most active ones, you know, the uh, a what do you call this a horse link design when you are climbing fire road on a, a normal pedal bike is not that cool. Meaning you need all kinds of fancy shock technology to keep that thing from, from sagging under power. Uh, but on an e-bike, you get that assist. You do get your work in for sure, but um, it, uh, you're not so worried about a little, a little pedal bob, but it really pays dividends on the downhill. So I love that about it. The pivots are super active. Um, I'll show you guys in a demonstration. Right from the get-go, usually what I do with a, with a new bike is I disconnect the shock, and then I just see if, 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 the, if, if the suspension will drop or it will move freely. This one, you know, with, with their pivot technology, you know, they, they, they were able to, to, to nail it. Uh, the shock spring, I haven't really touched, haven't felt the need to, but it's pretty dialed. A couple of, and the 625, Watt-hour battery, it's no 700, but it almost feels about the same range. I haven't explored the upper limits of uh, this is the 625, but it seems, this one seems super efficient, you know? So for my, for my, body, for my weight and my power, I should be able to climb 6,000 feet on this, on, on Eco, uh, less on the higher models, uh, higher, higher levels. But on EMTB, I'd be curious to see what I can, climb with this before it runs out. And one thing cool with a six, 600 battery is it's not so long. The Levo battery is cool, but it's like this long. You can't really carry it with you. You know, it's gonna interfere with your ride, you know, put you in a little bit of uh, harm's way in case you fall and whatnot. So there you go, I've set a mouthful. Uh, I'm gonna be riding this long-term and, and take it to Downeyville uh, take it to other parts, Pinecrest, Tahoe, uh, and see what it can do. But I'm, I'm pretty impressed, you know. And, and Bosch, you know, I think I'll review this motor separately uh, because I'm fascinated with, with a, what I've seen from Bosch uh, uh, version 4 uh, with, with a new firmware upgrade. It's so cool. It's quiet. It's so responsive. You know, the only thing I've seen close to this is the Rocky Mountain system uh, where... It's just, it's just on it, it seems. Uh, so uh, now I get it, you know, that uh, how much Bosch has been working uh, behind the scenes to, to, to get to version 4, version 5 now of their motor. So there you go. What do you guys think? Intrigued? Shocked? Um, a, a little bit surprised that Niners uh, joined the fray? Anyone? Are you anti-e-bike? kind of neutral or definitely going to get one. Let us know in the comments. Thanks a ton.